in this video I will show you two very different variations on Christmas card just in time for Christmas now these are incredibly easy to follow you wouldn't even believe how easy they are these two designs are suitable for not just beginners but also for people that have never painted at all maybe this Christmas you can pick up a brush and just try this out I promise this will turn out well even if you don't have all of the materials I will be talking about substitutes in the video so really no excuses hi i'm leila welcome to my art studio let's have a look at the materials that you might need for this tutorial this first card design is very very simple okay just like i promised these are super easy tutorials so what you need to do is you need to get a piece of watercolor paper now here i've got i think it's 200 um, gsm watercolor paper just a little piece great way to use up your off cuts you would also need some masking tape ideally a soft tack so something that does not get a really strong grip that it drips the paper when you remove it we would also need salt now this is just your regular table salt so if you've got salt and pepper shaker make sure you take that salt one it'll work just fine you would need brush even just one medium brush see this is number six would work well if you've got larger smaller brushes you can use them all as you want just make sure it's a round brush that comes to one point and of course you want some watercolor paint but if you don't have watercolor paint don't worry you can still use gouache or acrylic paint if you have those two but you would need to dilute them with water to the consistency of watercolor paint of course it's not the same thing but it will be very very similar and for these little projects uh, that i'll show you today especially this first one it'll make no difference at all okay the first thing that you want to do is you want to apply masking tape now you don't need to apply it all the way around you can apply it halfway but if it does make it more comfortable for you you can apply it all the way across but here we go so something like this is sufficient enough if you want to it might make it easier for you if you draw a line with pencil that's the only line you would need to draw once you probably have a go and try them more than once you wouldn't even need to worry about it next easy step again is to choose the blues that you want to use so see i have my little sort of swatch thing with all of the colors so i want to make sure that i choose the blues that i like so i think i'm gonna go for prussian blue and cerulean blue next thing you want to either mix those up with water or you can just you know add a little bit of water to soften them up a bit so that it's easier to pick them up when the time comes all you need to do now is take your clean brush get some water on it and apply water to this area up to the line here this line will be our snow and it'll just stay plain paper it's that easy i'm telling you guys it's super super easy and up to this line just cover everything with water you don't need so much water that you have a freestanding pool on here but you want you know sort of a shine a bit of shine all through the paper now you can be working on the flat table but i usually um depends of course on what i'm working on but i prefer to have my paper a little bit tilted so that's why i've got a board and a few books underneath there to prop it up like that if you have a table easel or something like this you can also use that um, don't mind me guys i have to make sure things are comfortable for filming so i can't use some of the things now I'm going to go for the darker color that I have selected. So I'm just going and applying a little bit of this color. Uh, remember, if you are using not watercolor but something else, uh, it's preferably that you dissolve this beforehand. Okay, and then I'm going for the lighter or brighter color, should I say, and just applying it like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it up like this and see it run it's all gonna run up to the point where i've wetted the paper so the dry paper is not going to get any of it but everything that is moist is going to be covered with blue see if you get a little drop like this and you're worried it's going to drip you can just wash your brush dry it and then absorb the little drip but you see what's going on and you see how beautiful these lines are that are forming as well 
so here we can go over help it along this is a perfect way to really just let your paint do the work for you you don't need to be working hard at all you can just do this and you see how here the paint is a little bit thicker here we've got a bit more lighter colors and remember you can always go back and add more colors more darker more lighter you know whatever it is that you want so here I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker Prussian blue on top you can mix a bit of red to make it purple entirely up to you so I want the top of the sky to be a little bit darker so here we go and again just let it run if you are enjoying this video make sure to pop over to my patreon page where you can support this channel starting from just two dollars a month there are lots of tutorials, monthly giveaways, art games, and so much more. So make sure to head over there after this video and check it out. Because we pre-wetted the paper, it actually is doing a lot of work for you, so you don't need to worry too much about blending it. The only thing you need to worry about is making sure you work on all of this before the paper dries out. As soon as it starts to dry out, that's it, hands off, and you just let it sit there. Again, if you've got drips forming or something that you don't want to see you can always just go and reabsorb it with your brush okay my next step is to grab that darker color that I've used here on the top and I'm actually going to create a little sort of a like a dark sort of blobs kind of uh, they can be shapeless but we will turn them into trees later on Remember, these trees will be quite far away on the horizon. If your paint is traveling somewhere where you don't want it to travel, don't worry about it. If it's going too far where you don't want it to be, you can always lift it up and gravity will show it where to go. <laughs> you can create a whole line of those foggy blobs sort of things or you can just work on a couple of areas like I'm going to okay now while the paint is still quite damp we want to add some salt some areas like for example up here I think the paint is quite a bit quite, quite dry um, for it to show through but I think these areas should probably work now what we are looking for is little clusters of, of that sort of a white flakes um, to resemble either stars or snow or just something so magical you know something that corresponds with that wonderful um, season so I'm gonna leave that to dry and I'll come back when it's fully dry now you see how awesome the salt is it is so unpredictable that's why you always sit there and you just wait to see what will happen what will it do so in this one you can actually see how the paint that was a little bit drier actually formed really tiny little flakes they almost look like frost in the air and then the larger ones um, are created by uh, moist paint if your paint is super super moist and then you might actually get into trouble because the salt um, drowns in there. If you want to see a full uh, tutorial, I do have a tutorial from a couple of years back, I think, where I talk about different um, techniques and things like that, and where I go into more depth on salt and how to do it and all of this. Um, so yeah, I'll, 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 I'll find it and I'll put it under the video so you can look it up there if you're interested. So because now this is all dry, what you need to do then is scrape the salt off the paper and ta-da! you can pretty much say it's finished but not quite so now what you want to do is you want to either use this brush feel free to grab a smaller brush if you've got a smaller brush and so something like this would work quite well as well especially if you're if you're you know just starting out you're new to this and i'm gonna grab some of that darker color that we've used for over here and with a much thicker paint i am going to create this kind of a, like a tr almost tree like look so what i'm gonna do is on the top i'm gonna start with smaller little sticks like this and something that can look like branches 
and then put a line in, in the middle. So you can see how easy it is. I mean, even if you're a total beginner, you can 100% do that. Here, get more of the dark paint. Make some areas super dark and some a little bit lighter. And here as well. You can make some super dark and some somewhat darker. The ones that are a little bit more hazy would look like they're more further in the distance somewhere. Here we go. If you'd like to, you can grab a little bit of white paint and put little white dashes. I'll show you. You don't have to do it, but I'll just show you just in case you do want to. So here I've got a little bit of white gouache. If I can open it, that is. Okay, so here we go. So you can, again, clean brush. You want to make sure it's got a nice sharp tip. I'm just going to grab a little bit straight like that from there. And you can put a few dashes and blobs here and there. Again, not necessarily, you don't need to do that. But you can if you want to. So here we go. You can wait for this to dry and then you can just remove your masking tape and reveal your card. Okay, here we go. So this Christmas card is pretty much ready. What you can do is if you've got that line there, you can, you know, pencil line, you can erase it if it is showing. Like my one's a little bit showing, but once you once you've done maybe a couple of them, you wouldn't even need to put the line and you just know to wet it to a certain level. And you can change shapes, you can make it steeper, you can put bigger trees, smaller trees, you can play with colors, you can put in purples with the blues and so many other things. So just some different examples here. Uh, you can also, um, you know, put any kind of writing, like you can say Merry Christmas, you can use gold pens, or you can use calligraphy pens, or whatever it is that you want. But that is entirely up to you. But the basic, you see how simple it is? You see how you don't have to have skill, knowledge, or even practice. Very easy, pretty much using two colors, well, third one if you want to use white, and it's done. Okay, so here is a design number two. Again, just like the previous design, you can take it and make it your own, add your own things. If you are not a total beginner, if you've already been painting for a while, you can maybe take it the next level up and put more of the uh, representative objects there. But for this tutorial, to keep it very simple, I will show you what you'd need. So you would need all the same materials that we used previously, plus you want to use paint in the tube and some kind of a, like maybe a cup or a glass or a jar with a nice perfect sort of a circle around. Okay, so as you can see, I already have some green paint here from the previous little thing that I did. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of red paint on here as well. So what you want to do, just squeeze a little bit out. You can do it with the paintbrush. The reason why you want it out of the tube rather than out of the pens is because you want, you know, a bit more paint. And I guess you can. Uh, do that with, with the pens as well, but you would need to add a lot of water, dilute it quite a bit, and so on. So here I've got this. Okay, and now I'm going to put it onto dry paper, okay? It's important. Not wet paper, dry paper. So I'm going to put it on there. You can do it right in the middle. You can move it a little bit. Okay, so here we go. And just, just a little bit, just give it a little bit of a sort of a squeeze, just a little bit, right? And now we're turning or lifting it up. So you can see we have this cool little um, round thing. Now, there are other variations and you can use masking medium, like I did in a different version, um, you know, because I, wanna, I want you guys to see all different variations. Um, this one I'm going to do very simple, so I'm just assuming you don't really have many art materials and things like that. So what you want to do 
as a next step is to add water to this edge and make it run. You can use any colors in such a manner. So that way, even if you can't draw circles or paint circles, you can definitely really get away with it <laughs> in this one. So I'm just activating this paint that was on the rim. And now here I'm just going to add water and let it all run. You can add other colors, uh, like for example, I'm just going to add a little bit of this bright blue. Here and there, I want to make this one quite colorful. The other one was more green. Where is this one? I want it to be quite colorful. Here is Prussian green. It's a very Christmassy color, Prussian green. And if you want to, you can do a very similar thing. You can add salt if you want at this stage. Um, you can do whatever you'd like. I'm not going to add salt because you saw the effect the salt can produce. So I'm just going to use white paint. See if you get again a drip like this, just wash your brush, absorb the water from it and then just pick it up like that. I mean there's nothing wrong with it but it will take longer to dry and it can drip if you sort of just lift it up like that as well. This way now you've got this really interesting sort of a circle almost like a planet or something like that. So I'm going to um, leave it to dry and you see the more you sort of turn it around and the more it starts to dry on the edges the more interesting the patterns sort of become. Okay so here we go. So this is damp. But it's not like 100% dry, but it's not, um, you know, it's not wet. It doesn't have too much water. So what we can actually do now is we can drip a little bit of water onto the paint and create little spots. You can even flick some water if you'd like to do that. But we just want to create a little bit more texture here. So you see things that normally you would want to avoid, we're kind of creating them because again, we want to create a little bit of a fun texture here. Now you might like to dry your brush and absorb this water to reveal these lighter spots. You can create quite a few spots as well. It really is up to you, um, you know, and you can do different cards with, you know, different sort of visually comparing them to each other playing them against each other can be quite a bit of fun so now i'm going to go for the prussian green again which is like a mix between a green and the blue um, in a reasonably diluted manner and i'm just going to paint almost like little triangles here like that you see some taller ones some shorter ones different different height maybe let's do a little one here and maybe a thin long one there you can leave them like this absolutely fine again if you're a total beginner this is definitely quite good already if you're following along. If you want to make it a little bit more detailed, you can always do something similar to what we did in the previous cards and you can actually, you know, give them a little bit of that fluffiness that, you know, those evergreens have. Again, everything is very decorative. We're not going for the realistic, for the hyper-realism. <laughs> we are going for very festive, very Christmassy, Make this one a bit bigger. So you can just put a straight line going down and then you put a few separate little lines and then you just kind of do like a zigzag kind of a line. And there's your quick little evergreen. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of um, water on the brush and while this is all wet I'm just going to add a little bit of water and in some areas sort of soften up the paint so that we get a little bit of that variation in color. 
you know very watercolory you can also grab other colors like i'm going to grab grab this um perlin green which is almost like a black green and add some of that you know you can really play with it you can add some red in other areas as well since we've used red over here so it's entirely up to you you can use shimmery or golden or silver or glittery paint whatever you whatever you want to use okay so now we're going to leave uh, this to dry all right here we go so again you can stop right there this is very good you can say merry christmas underneath it with just a pen or something like this or you can stamp it or print it or you know whatever your creativity allows you to do i'm also going to show you what you, what else you can do if you want to sort of a, create a little bit of variety in your christmas card so now i'm going to go for some white paint and i'm going to put little specks of white paint here and there kind of to represent the snow again another variation of what you can do is you can use blocking or um, sometimes called masking fluid uh, to reserve a little bit of white paper like i did in this uh, variation here but it, it is entirely up to you not everyone has that so i just thought i'd show you different variations and possibilities so here i'm putting these white bits of paint over the dots over whatever i see now the word of warning though if you are using watercolor or gouache to create that stamp of a circle you can leave that to dry even until next day or however long you need to because that paint never fully dries you can always make it run with water if you are using acrylics though um, or something that dries permanently I would suggest to work with it while it is still wet so while it's wet you can add water and it will run but if it is dry um, that's it you'll just have to start over again just just uh, you know a little reminder for those of you who might be using acrylic okay so here we go uh, make sure you put them all randomly although you might want to put them very sort of a polka dot like it can also be an interesting look as I said, with these cards, you can really get away with anything. Again, you can stop right there or you can add a little bit of snow on your evergreens. So I will do that as well, just to show you, you know, in the snow, sort of a white Christmas theme. If this is what you're going for, then definitely I'd say add the snow. So we want to create a little white tip like this. And then we kind of want to just here and there go over the darker areas that we've created so all of these sort of a more or less horizontal lines that we did we can just add little lumps of white paint and it will make it look like snow some of them can be thicker some can be thinner some areas can pretty much be all covered in white like that it really is up to you just make sure that the tops have the white paint and again the more random it is the more interesting the look will be Okay, so we can do this. You can even paint all of this white. It really is just completely up to you. You can use a shimmery paint here as well with the snow. It can be quite, quite cool. Okay, so you can just leave it like that. All right, so this is, this is already an interesting card. 
Uh, in fact, at, at all of these stages that I tell you, you can stop here. You know, it would make for an interesting card. But if you want to take the next step, you can always do this on a bigger sort of a thing or make a smaller little circle and turn it into like a Christmas ball hanging off the branch or something like this. Or you can, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get... I'm going to get some of this color that I was using, you know, the red that I was using here. And I'm going to do like a little... I better be careful because this is all wet. Do like almost like a little outline. And you can do little squiggles if you'd like. You can do little bumps. You can do a pattern. Anything really that, you know, your heart desires. See all of these little irregular bumps so I'm going over all of these to sort of accentuate to really play them up this can be done really perfectly with like a gold paint so here we go so now we've got this sort of a color that's a little bit um offsetting the greens because remember green and red are opposite on the color wheel so they make each other really scream out you know they make each other stronger um, just like if you mix them together, they cancel each other out and create this brownish sort of a um, shade. But next to each other, they really bring out the crazy in each other. <laughs> and say so here, for example, we can do like a little little bow maybe or something like that. And do like a little... Again, it's up to you what you want to do with this, how you want to, you know, bring more stuff in, take some stuff away or whatever. But these are the basics, the two very basic um, sort of a formulas almost like that you can really take away and use and embellish and add anything else that you'd like to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow along and let me know in the comments how you went. Also, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it or if you found that some of the tips maybe were quite helpful. Subscribe for more cool things to come. And as always, I want to show my gratitude to the wonderful, wonderful patrons that are supporting this channel. Thank you guys so, so, so very much. And as always, I'll see you soon in the next video.